Hello and welcome to Heroic Lives. My name is Michael Kress. We're looking today at Blessed Titus Bransma. I have a soft spot for those who stand up to the Nazis. We're going to take a look at it today. Blessed Titus Bransma was born Anno Bransma. It was his father who was called Titus, and later when he became a Carmelite friar, he would take his father's name, Titus, as his religious name. He was born into a Catholic religious family in Friesland in Holland. Not known for being a particularly Catholic area, much more Calvinist reform, uh, the family had a particularly strong draw to the religious life, and all but one of the children ended up becoming a religious. He was born in 1880, and by the time he was 11, was already in a minor seminary, exploring the possibility of becoming a priest. Bransma would take his first vows as a Carmelite in 1889, and would be ordained 10 years later in 1909. Had there not been World War II, his life would have probably been academic. He was very interested in mysticism. He would go on to get a doctorate in Rome and would be a teacher and a writer. As a Carmelite friar, he explored the mysticism of the Carmelite order in particular, Teresa of Avila being a favorite. But something came in the way of all that, and that was the rise of the Nazis. The Nazis invaded Holland, that is the Netherlands, in May 1940. And this is where the story gets tragic, but also very interesting, because we see the heroic life of Titus Bransma in particular in what he was willing to do in adversity. In January 1942, Bransma delivered a letter, which was something like a cease and desist letter from the Dutch Conference of Catholic Bishops. He brought it to the papers, which were ostensibly Catholic newspapers, demanding that they stop printing um, Nazi material and propaganda. This is what led to his arrest. He did make it to several editors and the process was begun of at least informing them that the bishops were against this, the publication of these propaganda materials. He was arrested and when questioned, he was treated as a saboteur, one who was actively uh, going against the Nazis and trying to subvert them in the region, which was actually true. Um, in many ways, just being Catholic is naturally subversive to the Nazis. However, Bransma said, I had to do it as a Catholic, I had no choice. That wasn't good enough and he was put into a cell and for several months was left there while they figured out what to do with him. The time in his cell, the first few months there, he spent in writing poetry, in prayer. He was able to write at least a few times back to his order, but it was soon clear to the Nazis that he was not going to do what they wanted and that he was, in fact, in their eyes, a dangerous priest. They moved him a little further away, and his life of true suffering was just getting underway. Bransma was transferred in March of 1942 to Amersfoort, which was a uh, prison camp in Holland. It was already a definite step down, though he had been in a single cell before. Now he was in something much more resembling a concentration camp, where he would ultimately end up shortly. In Amersfoort, the, gar the guards made the prisoners, including Bransma, stand for hours in the freezing rain. And then they led them, led them indoors as if to let them get some warm clothes, instead led them back out into the rain. This was not a great place for health for sure, and Bransma's health started to decline at this time. He was put on a forced work detail, and the conditions were atrocious. The rations were very little. On Hitler's birthday, a certain number of prisoners were given amnesty each year. Not Bransma, but others who knew Bransma and saw him in the camp were given amnesty, and they went back to report about the conditions of Father Bransma. They weren't good, but they did report about some of the heroic aspects of his life. For instance, he was sharing meager rations with people whenever he could, and was doing whatever was in his power to love the other prisoners and to minister to them to the best of his ability in extremely bad situations. The Nazis ultimately decided he was a recalcitrant, subversive priest who needed the ultimate punishment, which was Dachau, 
and the punishment was to spend the rest of the war in that prison camp. As we know, Dachau, as with, as with Buchenwald, Auschwitz, and all the other concentration camps were killing machines. And this would be the case really quickly with Father Bransma. Father Bransma was sent to Dachau in June 1942, and it would be about five weeks later that he would die. Already his health had been deteriorating pretty significantly at Amersfoort, and now he was starting to have infection, weakness, severe weight loss. He was also repeatedly kicked by guards and had to crawl away to his bunker. One comfort for Father Bransma, though, was the Eucharist. There was actually a chapel. Now, the, the people were not allowed to go there, the people who were imprisoned at Dachau. But there was a chapel at Dachau, and a little bit of the Blessed Sacrament was smuggled out and given to Father. Father Bransma held on to it and kept it hidden away in his glass case. And for the few weeks he was there in Dachau, he had the Lord very close to him. This was certainly a comfort to him. And at one point, when it looked really bad for him, and he was suffering a great deal, another Carmelite came over to him, asked how he was doing, tried to comfort him. And he said he didn't need it. He had the Lord. That's what he wanted. And all these things, just as Teresa Avila had written centuries before, were fleeting. They would soon be over. And that's what really mattered. He was sent to the, the hospital ward as his health deteriorated. And of course, that's a really bad place to be in a concentration camp. And in fact, they injected him with a, an experimental drug as prisoners were tested upon. And within minutes, he was dead. Blessed Titus Bransma was truly heroic. What was most important to him was not this fleeting life for it now, even though it was filled with intense suffering for the last six months of his life. What was really important to him was the Blessed Sacrament, loving at those around him and trusting in God. Even in adversity and even in the last days of his life, he could be gently heard, heard gently singing uh, to God and giving him praise and worship. Would that we all have the strength to do that in such a horrendous situation as Dachau. Blessed Titus Bransma led a heroic life. Blessed Titus Bransma, pray for us. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can see all the videos that I make as we keep exploring the lives of saints, blessings, and other Catholics who are striving to live a holy life.